Hi everybody. I have been asked, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, show you real quick the binding method that I used for my All About a Boy album. It's not Hidden Hinge. It's not Stack the Deck. Um, the Hidden Hinge system is a system where you make um, a series of folds and I can show you real quick to where you do one hinge, then you do your gusset, and then you do another hinge like this, and then you do another gusset, and then you do another hinge. And what that basically gives you is that gives you a W fold to where you have that, and then you have your gusset, and then you have your hinge, and then you have your gusset, and then you have your next hinge. Okay, and you can see what this does. Oops, there's that one. In just a second, once I get it all folded. I didn't pre-do this one, sorry. Um, and what that does is when it's all said and done, it gives you this hinge system that looks just like this. And then you adhere it along this base. Now the problem with this system that I've been finding is <clears throat> when you're putting it together, because of the way that these are folding and these are all coming together and that these are folding, if you're not perfect, what happens is it can kind of get skewed a little bit and the pages can turn um, a little wonky. So I tried to come up with something to eliminate that. <clears throat> Stack the Deck does it. However, Stack the Deck does not do an even binding along here. Um, your center page is going to be out a little bit more because it's stacked one on top of one on top of one on top of each other. And so your center page comes out more. And I didn't like that. <clears throat> So this is what I kind of came up with. Um, basically, you take a one and a quarter inch strip of paper um, in width and then whatever length is your page. So for example, if you have a six inch page, you're gonna do it just shy of six inches. You're gonna do it five and seven eighths. And then you do the one and one quarter. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna score half an inch and then three quarters of an inch and that's it. So half an inch, three quarters of an inch. It, the good thing about this system is it doesn't care, it doesn't matter if this edge is wonky or if this edge is wonky. As long as you have this quarter inch gusset that's good, you are all set. And then all you need to do is just fold this and that's going to give you your creases. Okay. And that's going to make this U. All right. And that's what we're going to work with. We're going to work with this U. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold this second one here. Okay. And there's that U. And what I've gone ahead and done, I've gone ahead and made a whole bunch of these. And then I, here's my going to be my base. I did it in a different color so that you could see it. Normally you would do it in the same color. And what I went ahead and did is I took a pencil and a ruler and I just went ahead and I marked the starting point and then the ending point. Now this isn't going to be exact. It's going to kind of go over a little bit because nothing's perfect. Um, I just did it as a general guideline for when I'm putting my stuff down. There's two ways that you can do this and I'll show you the second way over here. Okay, I'm going to start a second binding here. So here's one quarter, one quarter, one quarter. One quarter, okay, and then what I did was I erased this top part because you don't want to see that because that's going to be the edge that goes along your binding and you don't want to see that. Okay, so don't need my scoreboard anymore. You can use a ruler to help you with the placement or not. It's entirely up to you. The one way of doing this is using score tape. Okay, and what you would do is you would take your score tape and you would go cover where you're going to put your binding. If you go over these two, it's not that big of a deal. You can cut it. You can do whatever. Um, it's entirely up to you. If you want to get uh, specific about it and go inside of these lines, go for it. Um, and you, what you would do is instead of going long ways like this with a tape, you would go this way and cover it from here to here. Okay, and you would leave a little bit of an edge. You would only go from this point to this point. But either way, it doesn't matter. Another way that you can do it is using a quick adhesive, and I'll show you that in just a second as well. 
Okay, when you're working with the score tape, all you're going to do is you're going to peel back the score tape, and because it's clear, you're still going to be able to see your lines. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your top edge, and you're going to go in, and you're going to find that line. I'm left-handed, so I tend to work from the bottom up. And then you're going to make sure you follow that line, and just press down, and it's that simple. Your bone folder has a very wide edge on this side, and that's all I do is I run it upside down like that, and I use that side. Oops. Careful you don't do that. That is not good. Ah, there we go. If this gets crinkled up like that, it doesn't matter. It'll hold. It'll be fine. Um, be careful and when you're pushing down, and don't do what I just did. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter if that happens, okay? Because this side, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have an issue because you've got two pieces coming together, so that's not gonna be an issue. All right, and then you're gonna take your next piece, get that crisp little edge on the one side, and you're gonna butt it up against your piece, and it will come down nice and naturally up against that piece there. And again, go through with your bone folder. All right, and then there's your center. Right there. You see, if it doesn't really matter. If that's ripped a little bit, it's no big deal. Another reason why it's no big deal is because you're going to go over that with score tape anyways, and that'll, allow, that'll bond that as well. Okay? Now, you would continue adding as many of these little hinges as you want. Okay? Just keep in mind that for every hinge that you add, you're adding two pages. So I have two hinges here, but I have three pages because I have one here and then this adds to this and then this adds another one. So this would add to the one and then it would make another one. So even though I have three now, I actually have four pages total. Three hinges, four pages. So it's kind of like one and a half. Okay? So just keep that in mind. And then you could go on. That's how you do it with score tape. Doing it with adhesive, it's the same thing, except all you're going to do is you're going to take your adhesive and you're going to run it. Sorry I'm, if I'm out of frame here. You're going to run your adhesive along the back edge here. And that's going to be what you put down. Okay, and then that's going to go, again, find your bottom line there. And that's going to go across. Okay. Um, it's entirely up to you what you want to use. I like the score tape because it's quicker and it's more efficient. A lot of people are going back to the adhesives because they bond better with the paper to paper. Um, I do agree with that, but the score tape for efficiency is definitely a bonus as far as uh, I'm concerned. Okay. And again, just butt that up against there. The other issue with the glue that's really cool though is you have a little bit more play whereas with the score tape you don't. Once you get that down, it's down. Um, and then what the glue will also do is it'll adhere, once it comes up a little bit, it'll adhere those two pieces down on the angle. Okay, so just so you could see again, here's the glue. And this is the Scotch quick drying glue. So another reason why this is good for this type of project is because it will dry quickly. This hinge system with the Scotch glue will be dry in about two minutes. Okay. So you can see there they are. They're both almost exactly the same. Um, either way works depending on whichever way you want to do it. Once you're done, then you would go back through and you would do your score tape on each edge here, edge here, and then that's one page. And then edge here, and then here, and that's another page. Now the reason why I liked doing this system is one of the things that I wanted to accomplish was I wanted these, when I put my page, let me see if I can show you. Uh, do I have a piece of scratch? Not really. Okay, I'll do it this way. Okay, when you put your pages together, okay, imagine this is your page. All right, I'm gonna kind of foobar it real quick so you can see. This is just quick down and dirty. Sorry, y'all. I should have had this ready for you. 
Okay, say say this is your page. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. Again, this is just a quick idea of how this is going to go. I should have had a page ready for you, and I didn't think about it, but I want to show you why this system was important for me to do this way. What I was trying to accomplish. Okay, when you do a, um, a page and you've got, this is really rough guys, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and you have your opening on the base here, right? And you put it down onto your, your piece. Okay, this is going to be shorter, so I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Right there. Normally I would not cut this hinge like this. I would actually make a hinge that was the proper size. But with the glue, it's a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here just like this. Now normally with the score tape down, what winds up happening on a regular binding like hidden hinge is that these two pieces are actually attached together. So when the front and back on this are attached into this piece here, this whole bottom has adhesive on this side and this side, so it's sealed shut. And so what happens is, is you lose this bottom half inch. So anytime you put a tag in, it's only going to go down to here. And I didn't like that. I wanted to have a fully open page. So I went with this in the hopes that by doing it this way, this one would adhere to the back side and the other one would adhere to the front side and it would leave this centerpiece open like that. And it kind of worked and it kind of didn't. And the reason why is because when I put the tape down and I did it the same way on this one, I didn't put the tape all the way to the top here. So it doesn't flush up against the, the, the bottom piece here. So what winds up happening is when you slide a card in, it hits that lip sometimes. Sometimes you can get it through and sometimes you can't. But if, if, if this is really tight, it'll hit that lip every time and you can't really get it in there all the time. So that was a downfall. But you can see on the inside, it's opened up and you can get all the way to this bottom. Um, so as long as you put your adhesive all the way to the top here, it should grip it nicely and give you the availability to actually put this piece all the way down in there to get the full use of your pockets. Um, that's why I created this system. So hopefully it'll work for you. Um, I hope you like it. It's easy to do. And like I said, I mean, even if you cut it, you can kind of see that you can really still get a nice, uh, completion out of that, but it's up to you how you'd like to do it. It's an easy system to work with. And again, I find it easier to work with than the hidden hinge system and the other systems because there's a lot less measuring involved. There's a lot less, I got to get it folded just right. I got to put it together and it's a pain in the butt. Um, a lot less measuring is always a good thing. Okay. Second thing that I wanted to show you guys has to do, I got some questions about the tags that I was doing. Um, in this album, I have, um, some tags that, uh, let me find one. Silly, silly, silly. Where, where are they? <laughs> I made them. I know I did. They're in here. I swear. There it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I made some tags that have these little, um, edges to it. And I talked about it in the album on how to get that accomplished. And what that basically is, and what I've done is I've taken the big kick. Okay. Make sure I'm in frame for you guys. And what you do is you take a spellbinder's die and you put your tag in the spellbinder's die, just like that. You kind of center it however you want to center it. You can cut it if it doesn't come out right. It's not that big of a deal unless you're working with a tag that you need exactly the right size. But you take this bottom piece through the die and then layer it on top. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put it in your, your, your platform. I have the magnetic platform, which isn't working all the way because my things are really bent up and I need to replace them. But you're going to close that down. And then when you run it through, you're only going to run it 
until this center bar right here gets past where it needs to cut. That's it. That's all you're going to do. And then you're going to back it back out. Okay. And what that's going to do is that's just going to cut that top piece and it's not going to give you any other blemishes or anything else on this bottom. And then that leaves you this nice, beautiful edging that you can do whatever you want with. You can do um, glitter on the top here. You can do distress inks. You can sand it. You can do whatever you want to it. And then make it a tag. You can cut these corners down a little bit, round them out, and it's a beautiful little tag. Um, ironically, some of the other ones that, that work really well for this, uh, the Spellbinders, the Tombstones work really cute for this. Um, the other die that I have is this one here and you can use this one either way you can use this one up and down this way or you can use it up and down this way it kind of cuts the same either way just a matter of how beveled you want this one to be if you can't always get this in the right way don't worry about it it's not that big of a deal if you put it underneath I just like to because just in case if I go too far then I know that I'm oops okay okay again just enough to get it on and then back it out and there you have it and it's only cut that little portion out okay and there's your tag and it's a nice little topper piece there and it works really really pretty um i hope you like that i hope it works for you and it's just again it's another way to use your spellbinder dies um another thing that you can do with your spellbinder dies uh stephanie bernard talks about utilizing your dies in a double way uh just by changing the position of the die um there's a reason for that it gives you a little bit more use out of your dies let me show you real quick and she's got it on her website as well when she talks about the um the spellbinders dies but what you basically do is you've got your die, you put your die in there, and then you get your template, you smash it down, and then you run it all the way through. Okay. I do it twice just because I like to get a little bit of that scalloped look to it with the 3D. Okay. Give me back my die. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's your die. And then what you can do is when you press it out, then you move this die this way. Okay, and then you recenter it however you want to get the design. Oops, make sure I'm getting centered here. Okay. Put that back down. And again, I have the magnetic platform, so it does help me a little bit. Okay. And what that's going to do for you is that's going to take off these two little pieces here. It's going to give you a whole different look. Okay. This is almost even a little flower. And I've made that with this die. So just a lot of different things that you can do with these dies. Um, a lot of cute different, you know, looks that you can get. Oh, I know what else I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to show you. I made <laughs> a really, really cute thing. Where is it? Ah, there it is. This. This is a gear that I made using circles, believe it or not. Circles, a punch, and ruler. Okay. I'll use the same one that I did there. Get me a good little circle that will fit. All right. What you're going to do is you're just going to get a regular circle. You're going to run it through. Okay. Oops. Don't do my scissors anymore. Okay, um, I caught a couple edges here, which is actually fine. It will work out. Flip it over to the wrong side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this circle and you're going to dissect it. Okay, you're going to cut it in half. Half. Quarter quarter okay so it looks like a pie you're gonna take a circle punch this is a um, I think it's a half inch circle yeah this is a half inch circle and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna go in you're gonna go in about oh I don't know quarter of the circle whichever of your preference and you're gonna cut it okay and do that into every line okay
and you have a gear. <laughs> it's as easy as that. If you want it a little bit more pointed, you can go back in and go in between each of these however you like. It's entirely up to you. But it is a really cool and really easy way to make a gear. And I know there are a lot of people out there that do steampunk and, and everything else. And this is just the perfect little technique for that. Um, but I wanted to show it because I thought it was just the coolest little thing and I discovered doing it and wanted to share. So I hope you like that. Um, enjoy. Start making good projects and give me a shout out. Thanks for watching.